We bring you the latest updates from the PNA newsroom. The Department of Agriculture has further intensified its efforts against overpricing of agricultural and fishery goods, especially the red onions. Through its intensified price monitoring and inspections in Metro Manila markets, the DA has issued notice of violations to stall owners selling agricultural products above the established retail price. In Munoz Public Market and Commonwealth Market, Task Force Bantay Presyo found two stalls violating the SRP for red onions in a surprise inspection on February 14. On February 15, DA inspectors issued a notice of violation to owners of three stalls in the Balintawak Public Market and two stalls in Quinta Market for selling overpriced onions. The task force also inspected the Mega Pasig Market on February 16, where two stalls were called out for selling onions without price tags. Eight other stalls were found selling overpriced commodities. As ordered by President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr., the DA has set the SRP of imported red onions at 125 pesos per kilogram. The Commission on Elections plans to increase the honorarium of poll workers up to 10,000 pesos. Comelec Chair George Irwin Garcia said the pay increase may start with the upcoming Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan elections on October 30. If the increase pushes through, the honorarium will be 10,000 pesos for the precinct chairman, 9,000 for the members, and 8,000 for workers on election day. Garcia explained that after taxes are deducted, only a small amount is left to poll workers, prompting them to push for the honorarium increase. Meanwhile, Garcia said the Kamalek will hold a mock automated election in June for the 2023 BSKE. He said the Kamalek would pursue the pilot test of automated polls in three areas on election day. He said the Kamalek is now working on a proposed budget for an automated BSKE. The Philippine Army launched back-to-back -back military exercises with counterparts from the United States and Australia to improve interoperability with Allied troops. The Philippine Army 6th Infantry Division and the Australian Defence Forces 6th Battalion Royal Australian Regiment began the Philippine-Australia Army-to-Army exercise at Camp Sionco in Datu Don Sinsuat, Maguindanao del Norte. Army spokesperson Colonel Cerces Trinidad said the activity aims to improve the capabilities and skills of personnel in urban operations, long range marksmanship, tactical combat casualty care, intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance operations, and small unit leaders training. The exercise will end by the 31st of March. Meanwhile, the Philippine Army 7th Infantry Division and the U.S. Army's 5th Security Force Assistance Brigade launched the Warfighting Functions Exchange at Fort Magsaysay in Nueva Ecija. Trinidad said the exercise intends to meet mutual trainings and modernization objectives of both forces by exchanging best practices, lessons learned, tactics, techniques, and procedures. The Philippines, together with two of its most popular destinations, have been nominated for major awards in the 30th World Travel Awards Asia category. Cebu has been nominated as Asia's leading wedding destination, while Intramuros has been nominated as Asia's leading tourism attraction for the second year in a row after winning the title last year. In addition, the Department of Tourism has been nominated for Asia's top tourism board. The DOT said the Philippines is running as Asia's top beach destination after winning in the same category in September 2022. The Philippines is also vying for the title of Asia's top dive destination, which it held for four years in a row from 2019 to 2022. Tourism Secretary Cristina Frasco said these repeating nominations reflect the growing number of international visitors to the country, which they intend to maintain amid the post-pandemic recovery. Frasco is also asking the public for help by signing up and voting until March 19 at www.globaltravelawards.com slash vote. 
And that is the latest and the biggest stories from the PNA Newsroom. For more news content, visit our webpage or head on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. We are also shown on the social media pages of the Presidential Communications Office and on Radio Pilipinas RP1. Stay tuned for more news updates. I am William Theo. We tell stories that inspire change.